Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle, I hope you're doing well, welcome to another video. It's Thursday morning, the 7th of March, and the question on everybody's mind who is following the Madeleine Soto case is, will her mother face charges? Let's talk about that. In answering this question, will Madeline Soto's mother face charges? Let's back up a little bit and let's uh, talk about how we got here. In yesterday's video, I presented this information that WFTV had acquired. And this is a summary of what initial investigation into the death of Madeline revealed. Written by one of the initial reporting officers. So we read this in yesterday's video, but let's read it again. On February 26th, that should be 2024, at approximately 1948 hours, so just before 8 p.m., I, Deputy Joseph, responded to Madeline's address regarding a missing juvenile. Madeline had just turned 13. She turned 13 on the 22nd. While on scene, the step-parent stated he dropped his daughter off at school and when the mother went to school, the daughter was not there. So they searched the neighbourhood, they searched the places they thought she might be. When I arrived on scene, I spoke with the mother, Jennifer Lissette Soto, who gave me verbal and sworn written testimony. On February 26, 2024, at approximately 800 hours, 8 a.m., Jennifer observed missing Madeline Soto getting dressed for school. Stepfather Stefan Stearns took Madeline to school, dropping her off near the intersection of Town Loop Boulevard and Hunter's Park Lane at approximately 8.30. And he said he dropped her off between 8.25 and 8.40. And he saw her walking away looking through her bag for her headphones. A lot of irrelevant detail there. Why do people give irrelevant detail? Oh, she stopped, she was looking in her book bag. Well, she always looks in her book bag. Well, I thought Jennifer Soto said that she normally took Madeline to school. So how would Stefan know what Madeline did? But we know this is all a lie. We know this does not fit with what law enforcement believe happened. Dozens and dozens of detectives, crime analysts, and specialized team members uh, have been working non-stop and following up on every single lead and every shred of evidence. Our detectives have determined that Madeline was never dropped off on the morning of February 26th near her school. Instead, we believe she was already dead at the time and that Stefan Stearns moved her body in the early morning hours on that day. We have video evidence that shows Stefan Stearns discarding items in a dumpster in that apartment complex in Kissimmee at 7.35 on Monday, February 26. Detectives later recovered Madeline's backpack and her school issued laptop from that dumpster. At 8.19, we have evidence that shows Stefan Stearns returning to the complex and Madeline was visible in that vehicle. We believe she was already dead at that time. So at 7.35, he was throwing things away in a dumpster at the apartment complex. When they looked in there, it was Madeline's backpack and Madeline's school issued laptop. The most incriminating piece of information that we've got so far against Stefan is the fact that he arrived back at the apartment complex at 8.19 and Madeline was in there but appeared to be deceased. So Jennifer Soto to the initial responding officer that she saw Madeline getting dressed for school at 8am is an out and out lie. Why on earth she went on the news and said that the last time she saw Madeline was the night before. We spoke about her birthday party. She had a birthday party on Sunday. Uh, she had a great time. Uh, I couldn't make it because I was working. 
but she had an amazing time. She was so happy with all her gifts. Uh, I, I told her good night, and um, yeah, that was it. I, I, I was the one who took her to school in the morning. That was my partner. Um, but yeah. They discussed her gifts that she got from her birthday party that apparently was held at her grandma's house, but she didn't attend because she had to work. Bizarre, but we've talked about that in previous videos. Why would you arrange a birthday party at a time when you were working? You know, I gave her the benefit of the doubt at the time. I said, well, maybe it was an emergency. Maybe she didn't know that she had to work. And then she got a call saying she had to work, you know, for Disney as a vacation planner. But it's not important, really, because Madeline was alive and well at the party. We know she was. Lots of witnesses that she was alive and well on the Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening when that party took place. It's what happened after that party. Was Stefan Stearns at that party? Was it Stefan Stearns in charge of Madeline? Was her mother working still after the party? Well, apparently not. According to Jen, she spoke to Madeline and that was the very last time she spoke to her. Completely at odds with what she'd told cops already. So within 24 hours, she told two completely different stories because we know that this interview was done the day after Madeline disappeared. We also know that that report, that initial report that she gave to the cops was done very soon after Madeline disappeared. So within 24 hours, she told two completely different stories. You might argue, well, she could say whatever she wanted to the press. She's only obliged not to lie to cops. But they know, they know she lied. They know she lied. Stefan Stearns, however, has been arrested for the things that they found on his phone. At this moment in time, not for the disappearance and death of Madeline. So the cops are going to be really, really busy right now putting a case together against Stefan Stearns for murder. But they've also got the mother openly lying to police against the information that they've accrued during their investigation. One of the questions that they're going to be wrangling is, did Stefan actually murder Madeline? Or was he just called in to dispose of her body? Was it really Jennifer that murdered her daughter? These are things that cops are going to have to work through. We may find, and this is very possible, we may find that they arrest them both for murder. There's no rush to bring a charge of murder against Stefan because he's in jail without bond for S battery because he had been abusing Madeline for at least two years. But Jennifer, at the moment is free. She's free to move around. I'm sure they've got surveillance on her. I'm sure they know where she is at all times. Court TV had an interesting panel last night and they agreed that, yeah, maybe she should be getting a lawyer. Maybe she should have got a lawyer from the jump. And maybe she knows more than she's letting on. You know, Vinny, so yes, I do. The answer is yes, I do. But, but what I want to say is, uh, to Mr. Kessler's point, that an innocent person, sometimes anybody, and I think we all talk about this at, at one time or another, anybody, when you're faced with uh, law enforcement or an authority figure talking to you, you can be nervous in general. You know, so now you add on to that, you know, you are uh, under the emotional stress of your child is missing, you're fearful for what could happen. And because of that, you become no more nervous and you say things that might seem to be incriminating. And so it's helpful to have a lawyer in those situations, someone who can speak to law enforcement for you and give the information that they need without implicating you in a crime. Um, and I think that's where she has really, she, she, she's kind of implicated herself and messed up. Randy, as I listen to, you know, laying out a little bit of a, to me, it's always about a timeline. When someone goes missing, someone's murdered, it's about a timeline. And so there's a birthday party. She has to miss it, she has to work. She's a hardworking single mom, okay? I get it, you're, you're not there, you gotta work. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But that's the last time she speaks to her is that night. So what's, what's going on all night long? Where is she? Who's with her? Uh, what happens in the morning? She doesn't, does she, uh, a wake up call, a wake up text, nothing like that. It's uh, to me, so now we're looking at the window of time when she was potentially murdered. Yeah, you know, we're gonna have to piece this together. It's sort of like a, uh, a documentary for TV. We're gonna put a lot of things together. This, there's no eyewitness, there's no confession. You know, this is one of those cases where more she says, the more she's giving the prosecution something to use.
Um, but if she's innocent, right? Randy, if she's that innocent woman that we spoke about, and she may be 1,000% innocent in all of this, I, I don't know. Um, it would seem that she would be a crucial witness. If, if, if the facts play out this way, if the allegation is right. that he murdered her sometime after that party, after she spoke to her, then this mother, if she doesn't know anything, she's perhaps the most important witness in the case for the prosecution as well. Yeah, but we're looking at TV interviews. We're not looking at a forensic interview. She should be with a lawyer, talking to the authorities, talking to law enforcement, helping them find whoever did it or find the clues. We, you know, we don't convict people and we don't judge people in courts of law based on TV interviews or based on their facial gestures. All right, let me throw this out to everyone. Let me throw this out to everyone. Um, is there a scenario? Let's let's again presume that she's innocent, but let's presume that she's no, she's factually innocent. That's okay? a good presumption, Vinny. Right, That's the right. Presumption. For the sake of the argument, we're presuming that she's factually innocent. Is there any scenario, Rick, where you would see? An attorney saying, no, you're not going to talk to law enforcement, the mother of the victim. So, Vinny, here's what I would say. If I talk to her in advance and she gives me answers when I'm asking her what happened, they seem to be inconsistent with the facts that are already known. Yeah, I got to say, hey, listen, we're not we're not going to we're not going to talk to to the media or, or law enforcement. I'll, I'll do that. But will she face charges for lying to cops? Yes. Under Florida statute. Yes, she can. And this is what they might arrest her on initially. Florida statute prohibits reporting a real crime and also giving false information. There is a difference between lying and being mistaken. It's a crime to lie to law enforcement, but it's not a crime to be mistaken. So they could arrest her for that right now. If they've got probable cause to believe that Madeline was deceased by 819, which they do, she lied. But it's small fry, that arrest would be small fry against what potentially she could be charged with. Potentially, she could be charged with murder along with Stefan. It remains to be seen, but they can take their time. Because once an arrest is made for anything but something as serious as murder, Madeline died under suspicious circumstances and they've got reason to believe that Stefan has been abusing her for two years, then it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good for either of them, does it? It doesn't look good for Stefan. Also, doesn't look good for Jennifer. Where was she when all this abuse was taking place? Cops are going to have all of those questions just like we do. Was she involved? Is the very least she's done is cover up for him in Madeline's disappearance. But the question is why? Was she cover up for her boyfriend that some have argued she was split up from until very recently? Why would she lie for him? Why would she protect him instead of her own daughter? We've got those questions, but you better believe cops also have those questions. It's their job to investigate this to as good a degree as the evidence will allow. Therefore, charges brought against Stefan for murder or Jennifer as his accomplice, or the real murderer, we don't know yet, that they will stick. Because once a charge is brought, then everybody has a right to a speedy trial. So it pays for them to be careful, cautious, and take their time. Because that clock starts as soon as that charge is brought. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think that Stefan did all of this murder and hiding the body. We know Stefan likely was the one that hid the body because he was seen with a flat tire around 1.30 at the very location that Madeline's body was found. The old Hickory Tree Road area of St. Cloud, about 20 miles away from Kissimmee. But did Jen help him? Is Jen the one who murdered Madeline? Personally, at this moment in time, I think Stefan murdered her. I think Stefan is the one. However, Jen Lyon, like she has, you've got to ask the question, was she involved? At the very least, she's covered for Stefan. That's where I am right now, but very fluid, very rapidly developing situation. So let's wait and see. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.